So today I'm hopefully going to make filling my onboard water tank much less annoying. Or possibly make it a lot worse. Oh, Hopefully it's going to make it better. Hi, it's Dave T here, and if you follow this channel, then you'll probably know that I've already made two improvements to my onboard water tank system on my Bailey Caravan. The first was to fit an automatic bypass valve so that instead of reaching under to turn on and off the manual bypass valve, it would automatically change over as soon as we switched to the external pump. The second was to add a water level gauge so that we could tell how much was in the tank. Now both of these features have made it much better to use the system but there is still one very annoying thing about when we are filling the tank. Now filling the onboard tanks takes somewhere between kind of five and ten minutes and at the moment the only way we can tell if the onboard tank is actually full is we either have to look underneath the van to see if it's overflowing or we have to just keep on checking the gauge again and again to see once it's full. This can be awkward when we're setting up on site because we're busy doing other things. We don't want to necessarily just sit around waiting and it's awkward to check and listen out for it. And if there's other wind noise and stuff, you can't really tell if it's overflowing. Our old van, the Swift, also had an onboard tank system. That had a different approach where they allowed you to set a certain number of minutes for how long the external pump would run to fill the tank. Now that didn't really work either because basically you could only set a certain number of minutes so it might not fill the tank fully and obviously it's going to be a different number of minutes you need depending on whether it's full or half full before you actually started to top it up. So that didn't work either. Now the ideal system is for the tank or the system to actually detect once the tank is full and then turn off the external pump. Now I looked around on the market for various solutions and various kind of float valves and so on but most of the float valves I could find would only switch a low current and that would mean I'd have to also add a relay which would need powering. I didn't want to add that kind of complexity into the system. However, recently I purchased this 3D printer, which has opened up a whole new realm of possibilities. Using Fusion 360 software, I designed and modeled this float valve assembly. This was then printed using the 3D printer, and that's why everything you're looking now, apart from the micro switch and some small bolts, was printed from a roll of filament like this. Now, I'll put a link to the model file in the description below if you want to download it and print it yourself. I purchased a small micro switch which was rated to 6 amps at 12 volts and as you can see when the float raises it pushes against the micro switch changing a normally closed switch to open which therefore just turns off the motor. In terms of wiring all I had to do was basically splice it into the return feed to the pump so we're switching it off on the neutral which is not exactly ideal but it will work fine. By the way, I actually found it quite difficult to find a switch which was rated at 6 amps or higher for 12 volts. And it seemed to be from the specs I was reading that the actual general rating of these switches decreased as the voltage. Now I'm aware that happens with alternating current, but this was with DC. And I'm, not I'm also aware obviously that in a circuit the current tends to rise when the voltage decreases but this was the actual rating of the switch so I'm not entirely sure why that was if anyone knows then please do mention it in the comments I'll be interested but either way the switch I found is rated to 6 amps which is more than the actual pump drawers so that's totally fine and it's 6 amps at 12 volts. To fit the float assembly I had to drill a 20 mil hole in the tank and I recommend taking some sort of cup or maybe something like a towel and put that into the tank to catch any swarf rather than have to try and pick up the pieces afterwards which is what ended up happening with me. Oh. The switch is then wired into the power line to the pump meaning that as soon as the tank is full it will shut off the pump. We do still need to switch back from the outboard to the onboard pump afterwards but that's totally fine. The main thing I was trying to avoid is basically wasting the water we'd had to go and collect in the aqua roll by it just overflowing until we realised that um, the tank was full. So that's it. Our onboard tank filling process is now pretty much as automated as I can possibly make it and it's basically a case of collecting the water switching to external, wait until it turns off, then switch it back to internal. No water wasted hopefully and uh, that should make life a lot less um, frustrating and annoying when trying to fill up on site. I'm sure this is going to be the first of many different projects where I use a 3D printer for caravan related projects and I'll put the, a link to the model file so you can download the model and print it yourself if you have a 3D printer 
if that's of interest to you. Hope you have found this video helpful or interesting and if you have then do please hit that like button and if you're interested in seeing other videos I make then do please consider subscribing to my channel but most of all thanks for watching.